you hear me? Okay. Okay, so I'll uh, start by thanking the organizer uh, for continuing this wonderful community meeting for sixth year, I think now. Uh, so I'll be talking about some work uh, actually uh, related, uh, I mean, not related, but uh, we, we already talked about Anderson localization. So it's also will be related to Anderson localization, somewhat old questions and uh, problems, which has some new interest, maybe. Uh, okay, so before that, I'll just start by acknowledging the uh, people who have done the work. So all the work actually done by Jagannath, uh, who is, I think, here, and uh, uh, in collaboration with Subroto and Rahul. Uh, Rahul is also here. Uh, okay, so uh, just uh, so Vishak already uh, mentioned about this. So it's the old uh, problem, uh, 1958 Anderson. Uh, so this uh, question that if you have a single particle or some wave uh, in a random medium, uh, what is the uh, outcome? Uh, I mean, what is the quantum states uh, or uh, states of the system if it is normal mode uh, like Vishak was talking about? So I'll be talking about uh, fermionic systems. So uh, like you take a... Uh, tight binding model and the random potential comes as an on-site random potential which is drawn from some distribution with some strength W. And as Anderson shows that uh, there could be two distinct uh, possibilities, of course depends on dimension, uh, but uh, you, I mean for some weak uh, strength of this disorder you would have some states which are extended and essentially determined by the normalization which is the determined by the system size L or it could be localized around certain points in space because the system is disordered and uh, decays around that with some localization length xi. And now depending on dimension and the symmetry class, uh, you could have transition or not. Uh, for example, in three dimension or higher, you could have a critical point, uh, the 3D understand critical point in three dimension at some critical disorder strength. Now, uh, the kind of thing that I'll be discussing is mostly transport. So we'll be looking into the conductance and uh, this uh, fact that wave function could be extended or localized has consequence for conductance. It could be either uh, diffusive, which is L to the power D minus 2, D being the dimension, or insulator, uh, uh, insulating exponentially localized behavior, the kind of thing Abhishek was showing for a finite system L, uh, it decays with the system size exponentially. And now, <coughs> Okay, so there's some uh, problem here. So what was it supposed to show was uh, this uh, title of this famous uh, paper by uh, Gang of Four, uh, this Abrahams et al. So uh, essentially, the one of the uh, uh, understanding of this phenomena came from very powerful and somewhat simple idea of uh, scaling theory of localization. And the main statement was that if you look into some dimensionless conductance, and if you try to see, see how this conductance changes as a function of system size, then the derivative, the logarithmic derivative of this uh, thing as a function of length uh, only uh, is a function which only depends on uh, conductance. Okay? So that was the assumption in the scaling theory. And then uh, they assume that this function uh, is continuous and monotonic. Uh, uh, so this was again an assumption. And, uh, and the main idea was that based on just this uh, very simple assumptions, uh, which are kind of ad hoc, uh, but uh, simple, uh, and knowing the form of the uh, asymptotic form of this uh, this function at very large conductances and at very small uh, conductances. So basically, at very large conductances, it will be diffusive. So you can have these different asymptotic lines, and very small conductances, it will be given by this exponentially localized form, which translates to this logarithmic beta function. And then what they said that assuming this continuous and monotonic behavior, you just connect them and that will tell you whether you have a transition or not in some dimension and that will essentially describe to you that uh, any uh, dimension less than uh, uh, 3, uh, basically you will have all states localized because that's the way you can connect this. Uh, however, in 3 dimension, this uh, beta function will cross through 0, it has to change sign and that will lead to a critical state with a scale invariant conductance. Okay, so now, however, this Anderson localization is not only limited to random system, and that's where our interest comes. Uh, so there has been a lot of work uh, in the time of this gap of force scaling theory uh, by on quasi-periodic systems, uh, and these systems are special because they show localization, of course, but it, they also show metal insulator transition, this transition even in one dimension or low dimension. Okay, so the famous example uh, which has become very popular because of interest in many body localization because this is the model that has been uh, uh, simulated or analog computed in uh, cold atomic traps, uh, this 1D Aubrey Andre model. So what you do is replace this disorder potential by a quasi-periodic potential, for example, something like cos 
a cosine whose arguments is determined by irrational number, for example, some uh, inverse of golden ratio, uh, which are determined by some Fibonacci numbers. And there is a phase which you can tune to change the uh, position of this maxima and minima. Now, the main thing about this potential is that uh, this potential is completely deterministic, uh, but it never repeats. So, you will ne never find the same potential uh, at any other lattice points you find in one point. Okay? And the uh, second thing is that just uh, for the purpose of this talk, so I will be uh, talking about disorder averaging, which essentially means generating an ensemble of phi and averaging over that. Okay. So now, again, in the 1D Obre Andre model, many things are known. Uh, so this has been uh, known by many people, including uh, quite pathfind, uh, inter uh, very uh, early work and uh, work by Rahul uh, and other people. Uh, so uh, what they, uh, I mean, after this, uh, many works on this, what, what was uh, found that essentially, again, in one dimension Aubrey Andre model, you have a transition from a loca delocalized phase to localized phase. Uh, and the delocalized phase, however, is ballistic. So the transport will be L to the power D minus 1, not D minus 2. And uh, it turns out that this model, which was shown by Aubrey and Andre, uh, has a particular duality. Uh, basically, these two phases, uh, the delocalized and localized phases, are connected by a duality between momentum and real space. And that uh, basically says that this point, which sits here at V equal to 1, uh, is a self-dual uh, point, uh, which also turns out to be the localization delocalization transition. And it was, uh, again, the picture is not coming correctly, but it was shown uh, that uh, this at this critical point, you have uh, these critical states, which are self-similar. Self now, uh, uh, so uh, very recently, uh, due to interest in uh, many body localization and other thing, uh, this kind of model has been extended to higher dimensions. Uh, so for example, this uh, work by De uh, David Hughes and uh, Tridev uh, Devakul, uh, they generalized to uh, these quasi-periodic models to higher dimension. And the speciality of these models are that, uh, I mean, of course, you can write quasi-periodic model in higher dimension. Uh, but the speciality is that they keep, uh, keep this self-duality. Okay, which is there in the 1D operand uh, model. Uh, so they generalize to the self-dual model and uh, three dimension uh, in particular, they did some exact diagonalization of this model uh, on large uh, systems. Uh, and then uh, they found out uh, from various uh, diagnostic, a kind of a phase diagram for localization and delocalization. So again, this model is uh, self-dual. So there is a point which is V equal to one, which is this black line, uh, which is the self-dual point. However, uh, what they found that in this model, there are again a ballistic and localized state as in 1D Aubrey Andre model. Uh, but uh, these two phases are now separated by an intervening phase, which is a diffusive metallic phase. Okay? And uh, this diffusive metallic phase comes in between, and there is a mobility edge. So this is the energy axis, which uh, this mobility edge changes. But this is the general feature that you have a transition from localized to diffusive to ballistic phase in 3D. Okay, in the quasi-periodic system. Moreover, they found that if you look into this transition from localized to diffusive, you find that the critical exponent uh, <coughs> uh, is basically uh, follows this uh, kind of uh, uh, localization length, follows some uh, uh, critical exponent, which is same as 3D Anderson. So now the question that I'm going to state here, so what we are asked that could there be a single parameter scaling description, even for quasi-periodic system, uh, is there a well-defined beta function? Uh, that you can define, uh, and uh, <coughs> what is the nature of transport. So now, uh, the, uh, the nature of transport, essentially what we mean is that the conductance scaling has some power of length, and you can uh, categorize them using the, this different thing, whether they are diffusive, ballistic, super diffusive, sub diffusive, etc. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so one day, Abre, Andre, this question has been answered uh, by Abhishek and their, uh, their work. Uh, uh, so when they looked into high temperature transport, uh, averaging over certain energy range, and they found that this uh, critical point is subdiffusive. Now, what we are asking is what happens in higher dimension, and another thing is, does having the same critical exponent as 3D Anderson imply that there is a single parameter scaling in 3D? So again, since my time is up, I'll just state the result. So this is the basic question, that is there even a similar uh, diagram like beta versus log g that you draw for random system, which you can draw for a quasi-periodic system, and again, here we know the asymptotic behaviors. How do you connect this asymptotic behavior if such diagram exists? Okay, so what we calculate, we calculate various conductance. One is, uh, I'll not go into the detail, but one is the some closed system conductance, which is called Thaulus conductance. 
and you can calculate this kind of lambda or con conductance for open system. So, uh, so I'll just state the result. So, the result is that uh, if you look at this transition, there is no single parameter scaling and 1D and 2D. And uh, so, I'll just uh, again, all the figures are coming uh, weird. But uh, anyway, so I'll just uh, state the main result. So, what you find if you look at the conductance as a function of length, uh, you find that uh, these conductances uh, again has some overall scaling, uh, which are like this ballistic localized in these two phases. And in the critical state, it is subdiffusive. However, there has a very non monotonic uh, fluctuation as a function of length. Uh, and so, even the typical or average conductance has a non monotonic function of a length. So, so, this at once violates single parameter scaling because you cannot define a beta function. This is not a well defined function. And so, strictly there is no single parameter scaling. However, you can look at the overall behavior, and overall behavior, you can construct a beta function. And what you find, the way this transition happens is actually by discontinuous jump of this beta function. So, it is not a continuous function. Again, it violates the single parameter scaling assumption. And uh, so, we, uh, so the, there are several things. So, you find similar results in 2D, which I will not go into. Again, a similar jump some, through some subdiffusive critical state. However, surprisingly, uh, what you find uh, that uh, if you go to three dimensions, actually you recover single parameter scaling. Uh, so, what is shown here the, is just a data collapse uh, near this localized diffusive transition where you can collapse the data and actually uh, form a continuous monotonic beta function uh, and which describes this 3D transition and you get a very similar exponent uh, as the 3D Anderson model. So, uh, so basically, the main thing is that there is a monotonic uh, continuous beta function uh, in 3D, but not in any other dimension. And uh, however, this transition from uh, the diffusive to ballistic phase uh, is not sharp in open system, and you find a kind of a crossover through this behavior. So, these are the conclusion. Uh, so, just to mention that uh, why this behavior, uh, why this problem is interesting is because uh, there are a lot of questions about uh, many body localization in higher dimension and it is now understood that many body localizations are probably not stable in any higher dimension in a random system any higher than one. So, these uh, quasi periodic systems are examples where you can have many body localization in higher dimension and as a result you need to understand uh, the behavior of even the non interacting model. Okay. Thanks. Thanks Shumilan. Uh, we'll take one quick question. Sorry, I'm just a bit confused. So, uh, in 1D, we have this subdiffusive scaling, right? Uh, 1 over n power 1.4. So, do you get those kind of exponents? No, so, one or? thing is that we do it at energy resolved way. So, what we find is actually uh, you have uh, uh, for different energies, you have different scaling. So, uh, so actually, we, I mean, we can, we do it for three, four energies, and there is actually a dependence on the energy. So, if you look at a given energy the scaling. So, now when you average for some high temperature, so uh, you of course get this 1.4 scaling, right? So, we do not know. So, from our study, we only look at energy resolved way and there we find a range of uh, exponents actually. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, uh, let us thank all the speakers of the session.